this presentation I'm going to deal with the issue of negative frequencies. Um, the frequency domain plots that I've shown so far haven't dealt with negative frequencies. Um, they can be thought of as a simplified frequency domain plot. And in this simplified frequency domain plot I show each sinusoid as being a spike. So this here is the frequency domain representation of a, si a signal that has one sinusoid in it. So the mathematical expression for that would be x of t is equal to a1 cos omega1 t plus phi1. And if I had a second sinusoid in that signal, uh, for example uh, a higher frequency, lower amplitude sinusoid, I'd show it as a spike like this. Um, and mathematically that would be shown as being plus a2 cos omega2 t plus phi2. Okay, um, I'll just deal with one sinusoid in this presentation, just to keep it a little bit neater. Um, but really, my simplified frequency domain view is showing the presence of sinusoids in a signal. Okay, uh, now let's just give this some actual values. Let's give it a, a frequency of 20 radians per second and an amplitude of, of 4. And we can rewrite the mathematics then as being 4 times cos of 20t. And we haven't given it a phase value so that we'll assume it's 0. Um, now to understand negative frequencies you need to understand two things. Uh, you need to complex exponentials and I have a, a video in place on complex exponentials. Um, you also you need to understand Euler's formula and it's given by e to the um, jx is equal to the cos of x plus j sine of x. And you should be familiar with that expression. And if you substitute x for minus x, that will be rewritten as e to the minus jx is equal to cos of x minus j sine x. And if we combine these two expressions, I can get an expression for um, a cosine. So the cos of x will be equal to e to the jx plus e to the minus jx all over 2. So that's just by com combining these two expressions up here. Now we're dealing with cos omega t quite a bit so I'm going to substitute x for omega t and cos omega t is equal to e to the j omega t plus e to the minus j omega t all over 2. And this represents what's known as a, uh, a sinusoid. So cos omega t represents a sinusoid and e to the j omega t represents a complex exponential. And you should really look at the video on complex exponentials if you don't, if you can't visualize what a complex exponential looks like. But for those of you that have seen the video or understand complex exponentials, you'll understand that complex exponentials rotate in the comp in a complex space. Um, and the this complex exponential will rotate in an anti-clockwise direction, whereas this complex exponential here will rotate in a clockwise direction. Um, now you don't need to know that in order to get this presentation, but it would certainly help, and I'd really recommend that you take a look at the complex exponential videos. Um, but we can use this expression to rewrite this formula up here, or this expression up here. Uh, so this will be equal to 2 times e to the j 10 t, or sorry 20 t, plus 2 times e to the minus j 20 t. So this sinusoid here is made up of two complex exponentials, one complex exponential rotating in one direction or another complex exponential rotating in another direction. And every sinusoid can be broken down into being a sum of two complex exponentials.
One is made up of a positive frequency and the other exponential of a negative frequency. And again, take a look at the video on complex exponentials to understand the terms negative, comp negative frequency complex exponentials and positive frequency. Um, but when a lot of people plot out the frequency domain view of a signal, they're really plotting out the presence of complex exponentials in a signal, as opposed to what I've been doing so far, which is just showing the presence of sinusoids. So, let's just plot out the frequency domain view in terms of complex exponentials. And we have two complex exponential terms. Uh, you'll see that the amplitude of these complex exponential terms are, are half the amplitude of the um, sinusoidal term. Um, but we can show it in the same way. Uh, so the sinusoids has been a sinusoidal spike in my simplified frequency domain view. And similarly we're going to show the um, complex exponentials as being single spikes. So we have two of them, two spikes. And the frequency of those complex exponentials, this one is given by 20, and this one is minus 20. And the amplitude of this one will be 2, and the amplitude of this one will be 2. Um, and this is really what, complex, what negative frequencies represent. So negative frequencies really just represent um, complex exponentials. And complex exponentials with negative frequencies, and again, take a look at that presentation on complex exponentials to understand what I mean by negative frequencies. Um, but they just show the direction in which complex exponentials rotate. Okay, So this is my simplified frequency domain view. This is a more common frequency domain view in which, uh, which really just which shows the presence of complex exponentials, whereas my simplified frequency domain view shows the presence of sinusoids. Uh, now, the reason why complex exponentials are used rather than sinusoids um, is because they can represent a broader range of signals. When you're dealing with sinusoids, you can only show uh, signals that are, have just real values in them. Okay, and by real values I mean real uh, versus uh, uh, imaginary, so complex real. Um, so, for example, if I wanted to represent a signal x of t is equal to 3 cos omega t plus, well, let's actually give it some proper values, 3 cos 10t plus j sine 50t, I couldn't represent that signal in the frequency domain using my simplified frequency domain view, but I could represent it um, with this more complicated frequency domain view which uses complex exponentials. So really the complex exponential view is a more thorough uh, view of signals that can take into account signals that have imaginary terms as well as positive values. Okay, thanks for your attention.